Okay, my name's Paul Thomas and I run a company called Mycorrhizal Systems Limited. Mycorrhizal Systems grows um, a type of fungus called truffles. Um, so we set up plantations across the world uh, to, grow, to grow this fungus. Uh, truffles are very expensive um, and they don't, in fact, they don't look too glamorous um, d despite the, the expense which is attributed to them. This is a, a dried sample here, so it looks probably even worse than a fresh one. Uh, but they're worth typically the European species around about a thousand pounds per kilogram. Our native one to the UK is worth about two hundred and eighty pounds a kilo. And there's a white truffle species in Italy which is worth about three to four thousand pounds a kilo. So it's it's a high value crop. My whole life I've gone out and collected fruits from the wild, um, and that included mushrooms. And through going out and collecting mushrooms and reading about identifying them and cooking them, I read that truffles grew in England, um, but I couldn't find any. And I set about working quite hard looking for them. Um, and I couldn't find any at all. And around about the same time I was doing a PhD and I looked at ways of growing them. So because I was doing a PhD, I had access to web of knowledge and you know, all the online resources. And I started to look a bit deeper into the science of it. And then over a series period of about four years, developed a way to grow them. In the media, the harvesting of truffles, you see a gentleman walking out into the forest with a, with a pig on a lead. And it's not really done like that because you've got to get in between the pig and the truffle. Uh, which can be quite dangerous. <laughs> People lose fingers doing this. Uh, so we use trained dogs. Um, so you send the dog out into the plantation, you let him off the leash, and he or she will run along, pick up the scent line, and run straight in and mark where the truffle is. When I was at school, I guess, um, I, I didn't really know what I wanted to be. I knew I wanted to be outdoors, and I wanted to do stuff with science and biology, and I've, I've always been fascinated by that. I can't really pin any one person as a mentor, but I'd say my, definitely my parents have been strong role models in my life. My father is an artist, uh, so he's always been involved in the art world, lecturing and, and producing his own art. And my mother, she actually did a PhD in, uh, in neuroscience, um, but then she went into business and she set up daycare nurseries. So what I actually saw from my parents uh, from a very young age was I saw them working incredibly hard. They were structuring their business uh, for long-term gains in terms of paying off property value and such. So I think that's pretty fundamental in, in what I do now, because truffles are a long-term crop. Once you've planted the tree, you've still got four to seven years before you even get your first harvest. Um, I've always been interested in plants, uh, which again is a bit geeky for a, for a kid. I always grew uh, plants on my window ledge and in my garden. and um, I didn't bring it into the playground. <laughs> it's not something I'm going to be like, telling all my mates about when I'm a teenager, showing them all my plants. In fact, my grandparents had a small holding. I used to love it there, and there used to be rangers who would come and do moth experiments and things at their site, and I, I loved all that kind of stuff. So I was very, always fascinated by, uh, by the natural world. Biology was always just, just what I wanted to do. Uh, I'm, I'm also quite fascinated by uh, farming. I was growing my own, lots of fruit and veg. I've just put up a 33-foot polytunnel, which I'm filling full of all kinds of uh, tropical fruits, and, uh, and, and very into farming, and uh, yeah. so I'd, it, it's all linked to food and, uh, and biology. I find running a business is, is an incredibly free position to be in. You can go off and pursue goals in various different areas and basically do what you want to do. Um, so I think I would have always done that. I've, I've kind of got that in my... We're running an event, for example, in America in November, a truffle conference, where we're aiming to get five Michelin star chefs there uh, as, as another half to the conference at culinary side. So, it, so we do work with chefs and I think that's quite important. We've got uh, recipes from the Roman times I was reading one just yesterday for Dormouse and Truffle Soup, a Roman recipe. People have eaten them for a very long time, but I don't know who the first person was or, or why they would have uh, found this warty golf ball thing and picked it up and eaten it. Um, maybe because of the scent, uh, I don't know. Yep, Truffle Mad, yeah, I think that's probably fair enough. <laughs> I think that's a fair representation.